Hello everyone, my name is Christian and welcome to my hobby blog. Uh, you may be wondering why I'm sitting on the floor. There is a uh, justification for this because this is a haul video and this is a very special one because I've been ordering for the last six months or so, maybe four months, uh, Region B releases through a friend of mine who has been handling a lot of group buys for the uh, server that I'm in for uh, Boutique Blu-ray collecting, and all of them have arrived uh, today. I was uh, cleaning my dishes, I was doing some errands, I started hearing beeping outside my door. I thought I was going to be uh, apprehended or something. I assumed that the police were here because the world is crazy now, I don't know what to expect, but I am very happy to report that I have about 40 releases here. <laughs> Uh, to show off uh, today. So most of these are from the indicator sale that happened a couple of months ago. A lot of them are blind buys that I know nothing about, but I'm trying to uh, expand my horizons with 1940s and 1950s noir films. So that's a lot of my indicator, and I also have a lot of uh, newer uh, indicator releases and also a lot of pre-orders from Second Sight and 88 films uh, that came in that uh, this friend of mine uh, sent me. So the reason why I'm on the floor is because there's so many of them, I couldn't get them on the table and I couldn't organize them in a way where I could easily grab it. So I have a cushion underneath me, I'm comfortable. And without further ado, let's go into what I got. So first we're going to go through the indicator cell uh, the first film that I got, and I haven't done a haul video in a while, so I'm a bit rusty, but this is a movie from 1968, Samia's uh, Night of the Living Dead, so I'm excited about this, but this stars Richard Widmark, Henry Fonda, and Inga Stevens, and this is the film Madigan. This is a indicator release, uh, obviously, but this is one that I know really nothing about, but I'm really trying to dip into Indicator as a company, because I don't have many of their releases. I have uh, Corruption, I have um, Scum, I have uh, The Last Movie, uh, Ghost from Mars, Christine, just kind of random movies here and there, but they're a lot more focused on older noir films, uh, from what my impression is. So, I'm a big fan of Henry Fonda and 12 Angry Men. I think he's a, a, a great actor. I haven't seen enough of his films, though, so that's why I got this one. But I really love the uh, cover of this, and it also fits the color scheme of my shirt. Obviously, I'm wearing a Jaws shirt. Um, we recorded a Summer's Horror Withering Watch Pile episode last night, so I'm still in the summer mood. But the next one I got is a film by Chris Cook. This is one I know really nothing about. This is one that he recommended me, my friend of mine. And he said it's very, very good. And I don't remember too much aside from that because the sale was a couple months ago. But this is one called One for the Road. This is one that uh, is intriguing to me on the cover because you have these titles in between or underneath the faces of each character. One says half cocked, one says half wit. One says half ost, and then the final face says half cut. So I'm very uh, interested to see what this film is about. But every time I flip to the back uh, to get an idea of what this movie is about, I remember that Indicator does not do that. They just show the limited edition uh, special features, which there's a lot. Uh, Indicator is a very uh, substantive company, in my opinion. All of the releases are so in-depth and have a lot to explore about the director, cinematographer, interviews, cast, crew, everything. So the next one that I got from this sale is one I'm very excited for because I'm a huge Dennis Hopper fan. Uh, and I was not able to get the limited edition of this, but there's not too many differences from what I've heard. So this is a film by uh, Felipe Mora. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but... This is Mad Dog Morgan. I really love that cover. Dennis Hopper is an actor and also director who I appreciate a lot and who I am uh, 
really interested in uh, his career because everything about him is so interesting. Everything behind the scenes from when he made Easy Rider to uh, Out of the Blue and then the 10-year kind of gap he had after that because that was a very transgressive film. Uh, it really pushed a lot of buttons and uh, it's really interesting. Well, I, it was after Easy Rider, there was a 10-year uh, difference, I believe, until Out of the Blue. And that kind of put him back on the map and got him connected with David Lynch, who uh, had him for Blue Velvet, I believe, was the first film that he did with David Lynch. And I just have so much appreciation for Dennis Hopper. I think he's a great actor. He's a great director. Uh, I can't wait to see more movies with him that I have not seen. So the next one I got is one that I only got because of one reason. And it's because it's a cat-focused horror movie, or at least thriller. That's all I know about this. The cover is amazing. It's by Richard Macrond. Macrond? Uh, I'm not... I hope I pronounced that correctly, but... This is the film from 1978. The Legacy. And there's a really creepy, scary cat here on the front. And... That got my attention. I'm a big cat uh, lover, so... Seeing Sam Elliott on this film also is a uh, stamp of approval for me because I just uh, watched Roadhouse for the third time recently and it kind of clicked why that movie is so great but uh, Sam Elliott especially is amazing in that film and I'm excited to see a role of his that's before uh, Roadhouse so this is The Legacy very very exciting oh my gosh I can't wait um I'm putting all my movies elsewhere so I don't re-show them. This next one is another Dennis Hopper movie, which I had zero idea about. Uh, but this is one from 1961. So it's 62 years old. So this is going to be a very interesting film to watch. But this is Night Tide. I love that artwork. I, I would not mind having a poster of this eventually. But... Uh, it's Dennis Hopper. I got it for that reason. I'm excited to figure out uh, what else this movie has in store for me. But on the back it says, uh, Was she human or was she a beautiful temptress from the sea, intent upon loving, consuming, and killing? Uh, amazing, amazing uh, tagline there on the back. Can't wait. Uh, this is Night Tide. And then next we have one that I only got because I want a Christopher Lee complete collection eventually. And in order to do that, I have to have some of his more problematic uh, films. And this is one from 1961, same year as uh, Night Tide, starring Christopher Lee, Yvonne Monlet, and Jeffrey Toon. This is The Terror of... The Wongs? Of the Tongs? Of, I assume that says of the Tongs. But, uh... Yeah, of the Tongs. So, this is a movie where Christopher Lee plays supposedly a Chinese man. And it's, it's terrible. I don't like that they uh, do that at all. Especially Christopher Lee. But Christopher Lee has been interviewed about this. And he's very open by the fact that he did not like playing these roles, but he had a five or six film contract, I believe, to do this series, and it was last minute that they applied the very racist uh, makeup in order to make him look Chinese. And it's terrible. I uh, reject it. I don't... I'm not looking forward to watching this movie, but I'm looking forward to seeing what Christopher Lee does with this character, because... Christopher Lee is very professional. He learns all the lines. He does uh, as much work as he can when he acts and does just the best he can. And so, if anything, I get to at least get to enjoy uh, seeing Christopher Lee, although it's going to be a very uh, not fun situation to see him that way. I usually don't own any movies like this that have such uh, racist caricatures, but... In order to have a complete Christopher Lee, I have to have this, so 
I'm kind of torn about that, but um, at least there's a lot of special features on this, so I can at least learn more about the film and kind of focus on el other elements. But uh, I have a few other films uh, from this era of Christopher Lee films to show off also, but I'm excited for this. There is uh, a documentary about it, so that should be pretty great, but we'll see. Uh, Christopher Lee uh, in The Terror of the Tongs. And then next we have another Christopher Lee uh, starring film directed by Don Sharp. This is from 1966, so towards the end of this era. And this is one of the main films of this uh, contract. And it's of, of this series called the Fu Manchu series. And this is called The Brides of Fu Manchu. And... This is one of the ones that, uh, I'm trying to figure out what that light is. Okay, I don't know what that was. Apologies. But this is one of the, uh, Christopher Lee starring Fu Manchu movies, where they use, uh, the racist, uh, makeup, but I've heard this one's pretty good. Uh, I've heard about this before. I think there's a section dedicated to this era, and the, uh, I'm trying to think of his name. He's on the Christopher Lee box sets. He wrote a, um, Oliver Rigney, that's his name. He wrote a biography for the Severin box set all about Sev uh, it's Christopher Lee for the volume two Christopher Lee box set. And in that one, he talks about this era and he pulls direct quotes from Christopher Lee with this. But he talks about how this one and like one or two other Fu Manchu films are actually pretty good. So, this one I'm excited for because it might be one of those. Who knows, but... Power, or it says on the back here, Marry or die, power and evil are joined in unholy redlock. So, if anything, it has a great uh, tagline, so we'll see. It is a UK-West Germany uh, production, so we shall see. This is The Brides of Fu Manchu. I'm going to avoid talking more about uh, the problematic aspects from here on out. I apologize. Here's a movie here that is much later. This is a Brian De Palma film. One that I have seen and one that I haven't seen a very long time. But I remember really enjoying this. And it's also on Criterion, I believe. But I got the indicator instead. But this is the film from 1984. Body Double. Double. Uh, I don't remember much from this, but I recall that this is a heavy, heavy uh, homage to Psycho by Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, I need to rewatch that film. I don't want to say my thoughts on Psycho because it's been a while. But I remember really enjoying this, and I'm trying to get back into Brian De Palma. I had a very uh, small uh, phase in my film collecting where uh, I was watching a lot of uh, Brian De Palma films, and this was one of the first ones I saw, and then I saw Scarface, I saw, um, because I can't think of any more when I'm on the, when I'm on camera, but I've seen a couple of his films, about five of them, and I want to get back to my roots of Brian De Palma and kind of refresh my, uh, opinions of his films, because it's been a very long time. Uh, next we have a film by Sidney Point, uh, Portier, and, well, starring Sidney Poitier and directed by James Clavell. And this is one that I'm very intrigued by because I've heard that it's very dramatic and has really great performances. And this is the film from 1967, To Sir With Love. This is one that I'm very excited because I've heard nothing but great things about this, about the acting, performances, uh cinematography even but I don't watch trailers I don't look up movies beforehand unless I'm very uh sort of on my own because I had uh multiple people kind of help me do my indicator order to make it as sort of wide-ranging as possible and as great as possible and this one is one that I've heard before and I'm very excited to uh finally watch it because I don't think there's a Blu-ray of this in North America, and if there is, then I'm not aware of it, but here is To Sir With Love. 
And here's a movie that I was uh, intrigued by the uh, cover of. And there's not many special features on this release, but this is a film from 1962. So this is produced and directed by Blake Edwards. And this is Experiment and Terror. Uh, I, I read the synopsis of this on Letterboxd. And the cover had, has me giving, uh, is giving me uh, noir kind of vibes with the masked man and the woman kind of being held hostage. So it also has Glenn Ford in it. He's, a, he's an actor I know nothing about. So I might as well start here. So this is uh, Experiment and Terror. I wish they had the uh, synopsis on the back of this, but... The tagline of this is terror, tension, almost more than the heart can bear. So it's a pretty standard tagline from this era of sort of noir. Um, maybe it's sci-fi. Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, here's another Fu Manchu film starring Christopher Lee. So here's number three, I guess, out of six that I have from 1968. This is the blood of Fu Manchu. And I... I enjoy the tagline a whole lot more on this one than the others. It says, Luscious Lips, uh, hyphen, lethal, all caps. And the biting sting of death. Uh, so I love that. I love taglines like that. The uh, cover is interesting because a woman is getting whipped by a uh, pretty muscly guy. Um, so I feel like there's going to be some torture scenes in this. And some mysteries, so... We'll see how this shapes up, but I'm very excited to uh, finally explore this uh, chapter of Christopher Lee's uh, career. So, because he did many of these films. Uh, I don't know the exact amount, but um, I'll find out later when I eventually watch them. But here's one that also intrigued me. I saw the cover of this years ago when it was first uh, announced. And I really love... Um, the tagline for this. This is the film from 1945. So this is probably the earliest uh, film that I have from this um, this haul. But this is Escape in the Fog. I really love the color scheme and poster on the cover here. It is absolutely beautiful. I love the um, the cool colors of the blues and greens and also the yellow to sort of contrast. Uh, this is a Columbia Pictures release. This is a uh, pretty major studio that was around in this time. I don't know too much about it. I've seen maybe a documentary or two during uh, school when I saw that, uh, when I first learned about Columbia Pictures. But it stars Otto Kruger, Nina Falk, and William White. I don't know any of those people. It's from 1945. 63 minutes so that's pretty great but um yeah i don't really know anything about it but i love the cover so that's why i got it this is escape in the fog uh really great title in my opinion and here's the fifth i believe um fu manchu movie that i'm showing but this is uh also christopher lee but 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 here's the great thing directed by jesus franco otherwise known as Jess Franco. So I did not realize that Jess Franco had done one of these Fu Manchu films with Christopher Lee. I know they've worked together, and Christopher Lee actually has a lot of respect for Jess Franco and worked with him a lot after, uh, I believe, the Count Dracula film that they had done together before this uh, in the 50s. But uh, this is The Castle of Fu Manchu, so... The fact that it has uh, Jess Franco as director, I am very, very excited for. So, that's probably the most um, exciting part for me. Uh, the cover looks a little weird. I, I thought this was a, uh, right here on the bottom here, I thought that was a sheep. It's not. Um, but, it's Jess Franco. I did not realize this was Jess Franco before I saw that name. But, I remember now that I did... Uh, seek out any Jess Franco's that I could find. But we also have the fifth, Je uh, not Jess Franco, but fifth uh, Fu Manchu film uh, to show off here. So I guess I got all of them, which is good because now I can finally explore that chapter and uh, wholesale. 
but this is the film from 1965, uh, The Face of Fu Manchu. Uh, the, there's a lot of taglines on this one. The one on the front says, Obey Fu Manchu, dot, 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 or every living thing will die. Uh, I do love the uh, artwork on here. It is a uh, very vibrant poster. And on the back it says, Fiendish, Fantastic, Frightening. So, a uh, pretty standard tagline. Um, I much prefer the one on the front. This is the castle of Fu Manchu. Next, I have a film that I'm very excited for because it stars one of my favorite actors, George C. Scott. From uh, Exorcist 3 fame, um, Changeling fame. So, I'm very excited to uh, check this one out. I heard it was very, very good. Directed by Mike Nichols. This is The Day of the Dolphin from 1973. Uh, this is a pretty hefty uh, booklet here. I can feel the weight in this. So I'm very excited to see what this film has to offer. I know nothing about it. On the back of it, it says, Unwittingly, he trained a dolphin to kill the President of the United States. What the fuck? I had no idea. Um... I saw it had George C. Scott, and I love the name of the type of the film. I did not know that he trains dolphins to kill people. So, this might be one of the first films that I watch from this uh, order. So, amazing, absolutely amazing. I'm intrigued. I can't wait. Um, next, we have one that is a uh, Hammer film production that I'm very excited to watch because it's from 1960, which is sort of the golden age, in my opinion of Hammer that I've, at least of the four to six films that I've seen from Hammer, but this is the film Never Takes uh, Sweets from a Stranger. Never Takes Sweets from a Stranger. I kind of butchered that on the first time, but I really love the cover artwork here. It is very uh, intriguing for me with the police officers and the dogs. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be a very depressing watch. Uh, because it says here on the bottom, or on the back, the tagline is, A Nightmare Manhunt for Maniac Prowler. So, this might be a pretty dark film uh, from 1960. So, yeah, I said the year already, but... This stars Gwen Watford, uh, Patrick Allen, Felix Aylmer, and uh, Niall McGuinness. Uh, with Alison uh, Legat and Bill uh, Nagy. Nagy? Nagy? I don't know how to say his last name, so I apologize, but I'm excited for this one. Uh, expanding my horizons uh, just a little bit more with uh, Hammer Horror, so very exciting. And next we have a pretty uh, hefty uh, indicator release here from 1987, I apologize, 1987 from... Uh, I'm not sure, but it stars Bernard Hill who is uh, one of my favorite actors because he's in Lord of the Rings as um, King Theoden. I believe that's the same actor because he looks fucking exactly like Theoden, but this is the film called Bellman and True. Uh, if I'm incorrect about him being Theoden, then I apologize, but it's only 12 years beforehand, so if you give him some uh, age on his face and more wrinkles... I think that's him, and take away the mustache. Um, I'm very intrigued by this. It looks like a quarantine science experiment film because you have uh, the gas max, oh, sorry, gas mask here, and then the other guy, and there's a big bank vault being opened. So I'm very excited for this one. This was a recommendation from my friend, so I can't wait. Uh, late 80s uh, fun with Bernard uh, Hill. I'm looking at his face, and I am positive that he is, so I'm, I'm definitely going to look it up after this, but we're down to my final uh, standard editions of, uh, I'm sorry, my legs were falling asleep, but these are some of my final uh, indicator individual releases, but this is one that I don't really know too much about, but it has a really great, uh, really great um, cast with uh, Lee Remick. Richard Attenborough, Ian Holm, speaking of Lord of the Rings, uh, and we also have Claire Bloom. But this is the film called 
a severed head. And this has a lot of uh, puppets, looks like, on the front. I don't know. It looks like uh, Team America World Police to me, like kind of stringed puppets. So I'm really excited to see what this movie has in store for me because I don't know too much about it, but the cast has me intrigued. On the back it says, A severed head is not a horror story. It's something else. So we shall see what that something else is. It's directed by uh, Dick Clement, and it's uh, made by Columbia Pictures, so another Columbia Films uh, release I have here, but this is A Severed Head. We're down to the final two standard editions, but this one I got here because I'm, I've wanted to see this film for years, and I've been meaning to watch it, and I just keep uh, just not getting it. So finally I pulled the trigger and I got it. And this is a 1981 film from Australia. And this is, uh, directed by Richard Franklin. And this is Road Games. Everyone was very hyped for this when the limited edition came out. So I really want to know more about this film and watch it. On the back it says, The truck driver plays games, dot dot dot. The hitchhiker plays games. And the killer is playing the deadliest game of all. So, I'm very intrigued. I love the uh, sort of darkness that is within this cover because you see this uh, gloved hand here, on this side at least, uh, about to zip down uh, the clothes of this woman, and there's a bobbed wire around her neck. So, very intriguing uh, artwork. So, can't wait to see what this movie is about. So, my final... Uh, I guess standard edition uh, indicator title that I got is another Fu Manchu film directed by Jeremy Summers. And I think this is the final one because I did want to get them all in one go. I wasn't able to get the box set. So this is from 1967. This is uh, The Vengeance of Fu Manchu. Another Christopher Lee starring film with Fu Manchu. The tagline is The Ultimate Evil Ellipses. The Final Vengeance Ellipses from the Fiendish Mind of Fu. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, I don't know what else to say about these movies. I, I've i said all I can. I've assumed as much as I can. Now I just need to actually watch them. So, this is the film, or The Vengeance of Fu Manchu. Uh, and now we have uh, one limited edition uh, indicator and then one box set that I got from the sale but this is one that I really want to see because it stars Burt Lancaster in this role and it's a 1968 film this is The Swimmer and it's a big thicky uh, thick box so I'm very excited by that you can see the film within the booklet and probably a poster but I don't know too much about it but the tagline is they had the pools but he had the wives, so I don't really know too much about this film, but I was given a lot of uh, recommendations for this, and I trust the people who I talk to, so I'm excited to see what this film is about. Um, it's a Blu-ray uh, premiere, at least in the UK, so yeah, I'm very excited for this. The swimmer. I wonder if he swims in this film, but uh. The last of the uh, indicator releases that I got from the sale is a big old box set that I got of this uh, actress who I've always really, or actress, director, I, I'm not sure who she is, but uh, she's somebody who I've heard about through uh, film classes that I've had and film appreciation, the intro uh, film course you take, and then also in all the, um, in some of the, will talk classes i think he mentioned them so i decided to get the box set it was going out of print this is edition 5429 out of 6000 so i think it is out of print now but this is the box set may west in hollywood from 1932 to 1943 i really need to catch up on uh this era of film and may west is a name that i've heard multiple times so I'm very excited to finally go into this uh, era of film. So, 
Mae West is a very fascinating character, and there are multiple, multiple films on this box set. We have Night of Night After Night, She Done Him Wrong, I'm the Angel, Belle of the 90s, Go Into Town, uh, Klondike Annie, Go West, Young Man, Every Day's a Holiday, My Little Chickadee, The Heat's On. So 10 films, oh my god. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a really fun exploration for me. Maybe I'll do a review series where I talk about each film, but I'm very excited for this. This is a big blind spot for me is that arrow. So I also got a uh, poster that came with it, which I guess I'll open up here and hope it folds back perfectly. But um, never mind, I cannot show that because there are breasts on it. So I can, I will be demonetized if uh, YouTube detects that. So I want to go into my other boutique releases shortly, but first I want to show a box set that I'm very, very excited to finally have because this is a horror movie series from the mid to late 2000s, I guess late 2000s to the 2010s, and there's still movies coming out in this series. And I got this box set because I've been really wanting to rewatch all of these because I've heard the later sequels are really fucking good. And so what did I get? I got the Paranormal Activity box set, which is uh, all of all eight of the films, I believe. Yeah. So you have Paranormal Activity 1, 2, 3, 4, The Mocked Ones, uh, Ghost Dimension, Next of Ken, and then The Unknown uh, Dimension, which is a uh, shot on video edition of the film, I believe, but uh, from Japan. But... Yeah, I've been really wanting to rewatch these films for multiple, multiple years. So, uh, I'm really excited to see what uh, I discover about these films on second watch after 15 years, I think, since I watched the first one uh, in theaters. So, yeah, I'm really excited for this one. This is the Paranormal Activity Blu-ray box set. Has all of them. Uh, absolutely amazing. I cannot wait. Um... And now we have my other stack, which is uh, non-indicator cells, but mostly 88 films and uh, Second Sight. So, make sure... Yeah, okay, good. I have everything I want to make sure that I did. But first, we have uh, 88 films 4K that I'm very, very excited to have because this is one of my uh, favorite films of the genre, but it's not a movie that I like too much. I really love sort of the behind the scenes of it, though. And I'm talking about, of course, uh, Ruggiero Deodato's Cannibal Holocaust. This is a movie I saw for the first time uh, when I was very young. I was, I think, four, 13 or 14 years old. And I pirated it off of the internet. Like, I don't even know where from. Maybe the Pirate Bay when that was going. And I watched it, and I was so affected by it. And it got me into cult films. And I remember I was registering for classes my first semester of school, and I saw a class all about cannibals, uh, vampires, and zombies, I believe. And they were going to, that class was going to talk about cannibal holocaust. And I tried to sign up for the class, and my advisor said it was a waste of, you know, a waste of a credit. And I've always been uh, bitter about it ever since because I feel like that class would have been really fun. But yeah, I'm really excited to revisit Cannibal Holocaust. This is one that is a very tough watch. I'll probably watch the cruelty-free uh, version. Uh, I It also comes with a Blu-ray, so I really hope the movie is on it and it's not just the special features because if so, then I don't know when I'm going to watch this because... I don't think I'm going to watch this with my dad, who uh, has the 4K player at his house. So, I don't know. Um, I love the slipcover, by the way. Just absolutely amazing artwork. Next, we have another uh, 88 Films Limited Edition. And this time, it is a Jackie Chan film. This is a recent release that they did. But this is... Uh, I'm trying to see what year this was made. Um... 1978, so this is like prime time uh, Jackie Chan, in my opinion. This is Snake and Crane, 
Arts of Shaolin. I have not seen this one, so that's that's why I got it. Uh, I also want to complete um, Jackie Chan collection, but I'm excited for this one. I know really nothing about it. Uh, 88 Films always brings out the heat, in my opinion. I love all of the releases, but uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch this one. I don't really know too much about it, so Snake and Crane. Arts of Shaolin. And then we have another 88 Films limited edition, which is one that I actually have the Vinegar Syndrome release of. But I was pretty unhappy with that release, so I decided to double dip. And I'll probably have to sell off my Vinegar Syndrome one, but... This is, uh... Iceman Cometh. Uh, with... Uh, Yuen Bu and, um... Maggie Chung and also Yuen Wai who is one of the greatest uh, villains, or villain stars of this uh, sort of crew of um, non-Shaw Brothers uh, performers. But I'm really excited to revisit this one. I know this one has better special features, has better cuts, has a better restoration. So it'll be like I'm watching it for the first time. So I'm really excited for Iceman Cometh, uh, second watch. And my friend uh, put this movie in uh, as a treat for me, but I was talking about uh, recently how uh, on my 80s action Withering Watch Power episode I did with Dylan, I talked about how I have a big blind spot when it comes to 80s action, and especially Van Damme. So my friend uh, gifted me this uh, film starring Van Damme and Michael Wicko. And this is from 2001. Uh, this is Replicant. I guess it's not 1980s, but, you know, Van Damme, so. Uh, I'm really excited to finally dip my toes into Van Damme. Uh, I know nothing really about his films. I've never seen a film by him. I've never seen Bloodsport. I mean, I, I know nothing about Van Damme, so. This came as a pretty big recommendation from a lot of people, including my friends, so. This is the studio release, I believe. I was going to say it's uh, Kino Lorba because it, it's formatted really closely to one, but this is Replicant. I'm very excited to dip my toes, finally. Uh, and then we have two... Well, I guess the rest are uh, Second Sight uh, editions. So Next, we have a film that I really wanted to get on Shout Factory, but I was never impressed by the special features, and I discovered that Second Sight released it. So I said, fuck it, why not? And I got uh, The Baba Duke. I'm very excited to uh, rewatch this one because this movie annoyed me upon wet, uh, first watch. But after listening to Kat Ellinger talk about this uh, story, I think on Disconnected she talks about it. Uh, this film just needs a rewatching and reappraisal, in my opinion. Uh, so I'm excited to rewatch it. Um, this is The Baba Duke from 2000. 10, I believe. I'm sorry, the uh, Blu-ray like strip here is blocking the year, so I can't tell you that. But uh, this next one is another Shout Factory release that I wasn't impressed by, but I wanted the Second Sight edition of. And this is a uh, film that really uh, affected me when I first watched it a couple years ago. This is from 2017, I believe. Um... Well, I guess fuck me, because they don't have the year on it. But this is uh, why. Uh, this movie is absolutely uh, stomach-turning. I love uh, the cinematography in this. I love the characters, everything. The less said, the better, because this movie goes down some really dark, uh, I guess, storylines. And it's great. Um, this is why. I really recommend anybody to watch this, if you haven't already. I think it's on Shutter. So, and then we have a. Uh, I think this is Indicator, but um, this is the final Indicator limited edition. I almost got the. Uh, I think it was Yellow Bell Pictures did the uh, partner label edition of this film, but uh, my friend had an extra copy of the limited um, Indicator, so I decided to buy it, and I'm very excited for this one because this is uh, Gaspar Noé's Irreversible. Uh, 
I know nothing about this film. I have avoided it for so many years because I've always wanted to see this. Um, I know all about, you know, the controversy around it and sort of the, uh, the representation of sexual assault and, and that this film is a rape revenge film, but in the style of Gaspar Noe, who is uh, one of the most interesting directors ever. Um, his movies are not ones that I watch more than once or twice, but I really, really uh, appreciate them for what they are. And I really love the uh, visual style of Gaspar Noe also, because he just really knows how to use a camera, and he just he just goes wild with the angles, but I'm really excited for this one. I can finally watch it. So this is Irreversible. Um, I believe that's how you say it in French. And then we have our final uh, two releases I'll show for today. Uh, this one is a massive, massive Second Sight limited edition. Um, this is one I, I was intrigued by, but I never got it because... I know nothing about it, and I just had not heard enough uh, reviews for it, and it didn't seem like a movie that I was interested in. But uh, I decided to get it anyways, because I heard enough and saw enough five-star reviews of this on Letterboxd that I was like, okay, I need to check this one out. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, The Guest. Uh, this is a big, fucking, thick book uh, booklet, and also a uh, release, because, oh my god. Um, yeah, I feel like this is going to be like an entire weekend type of journey, uh, one day for me, but I know nothing about this. I'm happy there's a Blu-ray on it so I can at least watch it, but I'm going in completely blind on this one. So if you have any recommendations on, you know, the frame of mind that I should go in while watching this and sort of what to expect, please let me know. But this is the guess. And saving the best for last, uh, not to give any judgment about the other movies, but this is the best of last for me because this is a movie that I've had on a really shitty um, steelbook DVD for many, many years, probably since before uh, I started collecting. And when, I, when Second Sight announced this 4K and Blu-ray, and then Doc Sky released it, and everyone kind of went to that. I had to uh, kind of force myself not to get the Doc Sky Blue or 4K of this, because Second Sight is a company that I ve very much appreciate for the special features, and the special features on this release look insane. This is probably the thickest, probably most prized possession that I have right now in terms of newer releases that I bought. Because, what am I talking about? I'm talking about Toby Hooper's uh, classic, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Look how fucking thick that is. Holy shit. This is, uh, I don't even know what to call it. This is, um, gosh, uh, indulgence, overindulgence. But I'm okay with that because, holy shit. Um, new audio commentary with Amanda Reyes and Bill Ackerman. They're amazing. I've listened to audio commentaries by them before. You have all of the past commentaries and special features that are on this shitty release. <laughs> uh, so we have two DVDs worth of uh, special features and all of them are on this release. So I can finally retire this DVD. So I only have uh, just a few DVDs left to uh, upgrade. Uh, not counting these two, Juan and uh, Dawn of the Dead. I don't, I, I'm keeping those. But I only have these three left to, to upgrade from my DVDs. Uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space, The Mac, and of course the best film of all time, uh, Killer Condom, uh, obviously. But to go back to Texas Chainsaw, this is one of my favorite horror films of all time. There's not too much else I can say about it that people haven't already said. But, uh, oh my god, this is my prized possession now. Thank you so much to my friend, uh, Josh, who, uh, arranged this order for me and sent it to me because this is such a great, great haul. And especially with Texas Chainsaw because 
I kept going back and forth between uh, getting the Dark Sky in this edition, but I finally settled on this one, and I love how thick uh, this booklet is. It's this, the one on the left, year left, I guess. And, oh my gosh, oh my god. Um, 190 page hardback book with new essays by uh, Heather Buckley, Tim Coleman, Martin Contario, uh, Miranda Corcoran, Heather Drain, Lee, Lee, Lee Gamp Gambin, I'm butchering these names, I, I'm very sorry, uh, Caden Mark Gardner, Lindsay Halla uh, Hallam, uh, so we, yeah, I'm gonna start reading names because I'm butchering them all, but everyone who, uh, contributed to this release, thank you. You are doing the, uh, Lord's work, um, the true Lord of, uh, Horus Cinema, Toby Hooper, along with, uh, the other Lords of, uh, George Romero, David Cronenberg, all of them, but I think Toby Hooper is a director who I've really come around on. Uh, lately because I've been watching all his films because I just really love his films and yeah I'm just I I'm running out of steam here but thank you all so much for watching and please have a great rest of the weekend